All right, so um, good morning, Bayana. It's very nice to see you here and to speak to you finally, if not in person, at least by, by Teams. I'm based here in Prague and I understand you're over in Sarajevo in Bosnia, that's right? That's right, Jan. Uh, good morning and good to, to, good to see you and finally get the chance to talk to you. And thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to, to have this brief session with you. Wonderful. I've, I've been looking forward to it. So perhaps for our viewers and our listeners, Bayana, could you just do a brief introduction about yourself and your practice, um, where, where this is coming from? Yep, absolutely. So my name is Bayana Bosniak London. I'm a corporate partner at Maric and Co. Law Firm. Uh, we are headquartered in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, the firm is the largest and the longest standing firms in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have a staff of 15 attorneys and an additional um, five um, administrative staff. Um, we focus on foreign investors, we focus on corporate clients, on commercial contracts, and we follow the foreign investor when they come to Bosnia from the very minute that they start incorporating their business with all their needs that they might have in the country. Um, we are top firm by income and revenue in the country, which shows enough to, to the extent of the clients we have and the work that we do. Um, lawyers in the firm are specialized and we're divided into departments. Um, so we all work together, but we all have our own specialization, which provide, enables us to provide the best service to the clients that we serve. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and... Although on the global scale of things, uh, 15 lawyers doesn't sound like a lot. In many in many countries, this would be considered a boutique or a very small law firm. On the on the Bosnian market, it is quite a significant player. Let me exactly. let me ask a yeah. Uh, yeah. let me ask a follow on question then. Um, although you are perhaps the market leading legal practice in Bosnia and the most established, you do have a number of competitors. What do you think would be your main competitive advantage? Uh, compared to the other the other firms which are also in Legal 500 or Chambers, let's say the other top five, top six companies? Yeah, um, like I said, uh, we are the largest firm. So uh, we truly specialize our lawyers for the, the you know, I, I know that in terms of, you know, global firms, our specializations don't look so specialized. Mm -hmm. But for Bosnia, this, this is a small market. It's a small country. So we are very truly specialized. So you know, you will have lawyers working just employment and nothing else. And these other firms, because they're smaller, they cannot afford to, to have such strict specialization, which then, you know, means that they, they cannot have to, to provide the best quality service to, to the client. So I think that's um, that's one of our biggest strengths is our size, which leads to our, our lawyers being extremely um, well knowledgeable about the market and about the trends and the business that the client our clients are in which enables us to give them the service also i think that you know this we're a rather small firm and we we have very good uh, intercompany relations among ourselves which enables us to really you know build relationships with clients and really get interested and really get in-depth knowledge of what they do and how they perform their business and then we can tailor our advice to what they need. So we don't have templates. We don't use um, any of, you know, aids in providing our service. We treat our every client like it's a, a brand new case. And we, you know, we do everything from scratch for each of the clients because that way we can really dedicate ourselves to them. And I think this is one of the wonderful things about coming from the Bosnian jurisdiction that while uh, you may be the market leader with, with let's say, the 15 lawyers. Of course, on the on the global scale of things, that's quite a, a small firm, which means you can have good uh, culture, good relations. The colleagues actually all know each other, unlike in some of the larger practices, let's say in London or elsewhere. If you have hundreds or literally thousands of lawyers, you don't know who's who's actually working with you. So I, I think that's a that's a nice um, golden middle in terms of the the scope and the relations that you can have to the clients. This individualized approach. Okay, exactly. in terms of... And we're like a small family, you know, the, the 15 of us, you know, we, uh -huh. we spend so much time together. We, we are very close. It's, it, sound, it sounds very nice. In terms of um, business development, so 
of course, a lot of the firms in the Balkans have a traditional approach. They've been around for years. They they kind of grow organically by word of mouth recommendations and and the, the kind of marketing and publicity. Could you share with us, Bayana, not only some of the su successes that you guys have enjoyed in terms of developing the practice, what actually worked, but if I can ask a provocative question, what, what did you find didn't succeed and why perhaps that could be? So it's a, it's a kind of double question for you there. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think that we, um, the biggest struggle we, we're facing is consistency, right? Because uh, we don't have a business development specialist because we just haven't been able to really get somebody who understands our profession and what we do and is willing to give up their legal profession just to work on the business development side of things. Yep. So we kind of do the business development in-house by ourselves. And that's, that's our biggest challenge because when we're, you know, we see some times where we can actually do stuff and start some projects and then we get busy, new work comes in, new clients, yeah. new transactions, and it all kind of falls apart. So that, that's the biggest challenge we are seeing. We're trying to, to get better at it, you know, scheduling time for business development meetings yeah. of the partners, also, you know, making time, it, it, you know, every couple of weeks to sit together to talk about what we're going to do. But unfortunately, when you know we we see a big uh, inflow of work, all of a sudden it all kind of falls apart. Yeah, yeah. So that's the biggest the biggest issue we have. Yeah. And I and I, I think of course this is this is something which all of the the lawyers and the legal practices find. I, when I was living in Russia, uh, so I'm originally from Scotland and I lived most of my life in Russia, I would see this happen a lot with the law firms and I would call it feast or famine. Either we would have too much work and nobody would be doing business development or the economy would be crashing, we wouldn't have enough work and then everyone starts doing business development. So it was very difficult to have that kind of that kind of consistency. So that's that's one of the struggles. But let's look at the more positive half of the question. What what have you found has actually worked nicely? What has been a success in terms of your business development in and and your sales and marketing? Uh, I think that the most important thing for us is to to build good long-lasting long-term um relationships with our clients and I think by doing that and staying in touch with our clients and really you know looking at what they need and how they need it and when they need it then we are able to get referrals from them and to get you know just expand the business organically I think that's probably the best also you know it's very important to stay active on the social media which is also another thing that we <laughs> we struggle a little bit because you know we'll have a couple of you know a couple of months where we'll just be posting stuff all the time and then it just kind of dies down but um, social media staying on top of um, the market trends which which we are very lucky to be able to do through our C legal network yeah. so mm -hmm. we are we we get all the you know because in the C legal network we have practice groups and through the practice groups we exchange the know-how and we exchange the knowledge and we're able to really see what's happening in the in the uh, jurisdictions which are more advanced than ours and the things that will come to Bosnia in about six months eight months or so on so that, that's really important because that way we can really um, advance and, and understand as soon as the clients start facing certain issues, we are already, you know, on top of it and, and have ideas for solutions and similar. Yeah. And again, I, of course, I'm I'm kind of biased towards C Legal because I've I've worked with them on, for a number of years. It is a really, really nice network. And if I'm not mistaken, Bayan, it's also one of the more established ones, isn't it, in the Balkans? Yes, yes, we are the only ones who are ranked tier one by the legal directories and we've been existing for a very long time and it's very successful. And also, you know, it's 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 a, it's a network of um, 10 law firms for 12 jurisdictions, but it's also like a small family because we really stay in touch and we really, you know, um, have events together. We do things together. The practice groups do things together. Managing partners do things together. Um, associates do things together. So if we, we really... Um, get along nicely and 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 this really helps mm -hmm. and i i think a big advantage again is that the the bigger isn't always better in terms of the the networks you have these global networks where again not everybody knows who's in the network but if you have something which is that geographical footprint you know the the, the balkans former yugoslavia romania bulgaria i think it kind of works and people can know each other and I, I wonder if we if we look ahead, what do you anticipate is on the horizon? What's going to be an issue for clients, let's say in in Bosnia, if not the larger region, uh, to be to be aware of? What's going to impact them in the in the coming months or years? 
Um, for Bosnia, uh, currently, uh, 2021 was our record high year. It was a really great year. Post-COVID, everything kind of, kind of came to life. Then in 2022, can, things kind of died down because of the geopolitical circumstances. And this has continued, so we're not seeing a lot of M&A in Bosnia right now. We're not seeing a lot of investments, but there is work, right? For lawyers, there's always some kind of work. Even if, mm -hmm. if the economy is low, then we're still able to you know, do the restructurings, refinancings and stuff like that. So we're seeing a lot of that. We're still seeing a lot of restructuring, corporate and refinancing. So that keeps us busy. We also have a very strong litigation practice. So we, we, we see a lot of um, disputes. And our taxes department, because uh, Mr. Maric does taxes himself, is, is very busy because there's always, the tax authorities are always, you know, having a new, <laughs> new target. Yeah. And then um, Mr. Maric is very successful in his tax work and tax litigation. He has almost 95% success rate, which is very rare. So that, that keeps wow. us quite busy. And um, yeah. And let me let me ask you, I'm just thinking of another question based on my experience. So, as you know, I work with law firms all around Europe, sometimes in other countries, and I try and inspire and motivate and kind of push lawyers and partners to do business development. Um, have you had any difficulties in terms of motivating or encouraging lawyers to be a little bit more proactive in, on the commercial side of things? Because let's let's be honest, I can I can share a secret with you. It's it's not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody yeah. actually likes this. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we haven't had any difficulties, but, you know, we try to foster this feeling that, yeah, it's good to do the work, but there has to be work to do. So, and, you know, of, of course, financial incentives always help. So it always, you know, we all, like I said, we have a very good relationship among each other. So this really helps that we all feel like part of this joint project. So if the firm is doing good, we're all, it, it benefits all of us. So um, we haven't had difficulties, but yes, we have to talk to all the uh, new associates coming in that part of their job, yes, it's all doing the legal work, but also, you know, spreading the word about the firm and just, you know, making sure that the clients are happy and satisfied and this way also, you know, bringing in new clients when they get the chance. And I, I think it is so important at the initial recruitment stage to make sure that you're you're taking the right people to match your match your culture and i think especially if you have a practice which is relatively small to be sure that you're yeah. you're you're hiring the right people well, okay. our, our business practice is such that we don't uh, we hire um, associates or, or trainees straight off the faculty of, uh, as soon as they finish university. So this is their first job. And that way we can just immerse them in our culture and, and you know, teach them these positive practices that, and, and habits that we want to see with them doing doing the job. So we, we very rarely, almost never hire people who have worked in other law firms before. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we just, you know, shape them along the way. Yeah. Okay. That sounds that sounds like a really good idea. Yeah. Um, OK, I think perhaps at that point we can we can keep it nice and, and short and, and wrap up today. I wonder, uh, Boyana, do you have any thoughts or ideas that you would like to share with our viewers, keeping in mind that a lot of them are partners and lawyers in other law firms, especially here in Central and Eastern Europe? Uh, nothing. I would just like to conclude and I'd like to thank you so much for bringing this um, uh, awesome, really, uh, podcast into our everybody's life. It just keeps us on our toes and helps us think about and, you know, expand our, our development initiatives. And it's really great to hear about everything you have to say. OK, thank you so much. That's very flattering. It was lovely to speak with you, Bayana. Um, and I'll, I'll keep in touch. Now, I'll, I'll share this once it's all edited and finished when we, we put it online on socials. Excellent. OK. Thanks so right. much. Thanks Good a lot. Thanks. Have a great bye day. Bye. Bye. bye.